Welcome to TFL Talking Trucks Podcast. And Nathan, you know what I want to do today? I think it has something to do with gas mileage. Yes. Well, because I was just recently passing uh, by a gas station mm -hmm. and I was flabbergasted by the pricing. Yeah, okay. Again. Yeah, how much? Well, um, so I was actually in a premium truck mm -hmm. this time. This was a GMC Yukon 84, which is a beautiful SUV. Yeah, it's got uh, the 6.2 liter V8. Exactly, which requires premium fuel. Yeah, expensive. And I had to, this is in Colorado, mm -hmm. I had to uh, pay about $4.30 a gallon, which for Colorado pricing is high. If you're in California, that's a deal. <laughs> I know, sir. <laughs> that's, that's, are you kidding me? In California, that's... Oh my gosh, that's the, well, that's also probably yes. not premium. I would imagine that California is about a buck more expensive, give or take. Approximately, yes. Yeah. So this is why I wanted to um, dedicate this this episode to uh, the most fuel efficient trucks and maybe some of the worst. Okay. Um, and some of it may come as obvious to you guys, but what we're trying to do here, what we what I want to do here, is take our ten years of experience at TFL Truck mm -hmm. with real world testing, right, and give you in each category, midsize, uh, compact truck, full size, and heavy duty, some of our experiences with fuel efficiency. That sounds like a hell of an idea. Yeah, and also, so you'll be able to tell, you know, we steer yourself, you know. If you want, if you need a truck, if you want a truck, which one will not hit you in the pocket as much as others? I, I agree. That's actually a great idea. And bear in mind that one of the things we're going to be doing is talking about our real world experience, because as many of you know, when you're looking at the EPA numbers and the sticker on the, on the window and all that, often you're nowhere near those numbers. Sometimes you're even above those numbers. And We've had some very interesting results, and on top of that, we've had results that don't quite jive with the numbers that the vehicle's telling us, because most of these vehicles have an onboard computer that give us what they, the machine thinks it's getting in terms of gas mileage or fuel mileage. Yeah, so let's try this. Well, first of all, before we dig in deep into uh, the best efficiency and the worst efficiency, uh -huh. we have to thank our Patreon.com supporters. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, so Patreon.com slash TFLcar. We getting weekly donations from you guys, new people. Yes. So we really love it. I appreciate it. It helps our podcast. It helps our podcast. It helps our company. And by you guys doing this and supporting us, this is one of the reasons why we're growing. And every time we grow, every time we get an opportunity to enlarge ourselves, so to speak, uh, we have an opportunity to give you even more content. And that is huge. Yes. So thank you very much for that. And now let's dig in. I want to start with the midsize segment because it's growing. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of you know growth and more people coming into the into this market, um, and of course this has been dom dominated by Toyota Tacoma for decades, as far as I can remember. <laughs> yeah, I, it's one of the best selling trucks, and it's it is the best selling yeah. truck in its segment, and it has been for years and years. Yes. So how about we do this? We will go. Let's focus on the midsize first. Uh -huh. uh, this particular segment and basically explain what it is and also go in the order of popularity and quickly give you our impressions on the fuel efficiency. That sounds great. So first is a Toyota Tacoma. So let's hit it. So it has um, two different engines mm -hmm. and two different transmissions Thank actually yeah. uh, available. So there's a four cylinder 2.7 liter and a V6, which is a three and a half liter. And it's either can be had with a manual or an automatic. And it's one of the few trucks that still offers a manual. That's correct. And the best part with Toyota is that you can get the manual uh, on some relatively base models all the way up to one of their absolute most off-road capable trucks. So you get that, and if you hook that to the V6, you do have a very sporty feeling truck for those people who like manual transmissions. Otherwise, there's the six-speed automatic transmission. Yeah, absolutely. And so, as would come naturally, if you want efficiency, right, you would probably have to buy the lightest, the smallest model, mm -hmm. so the shortest cab, smallest engine, in this case 2.7 liter, and two-wheel drive. Right. So, but that's not realistic for many of us, right? Yeah. Because many of us want to go off-road or tow heavy trailers, which means we need to have bigger engines and four-wheel drive. That's correct. So a real popular combination is four-wheel drive with the crew cab right. with the short bed. I mean, that, that is one of the most popular combinations. And as such, the most effective way to make that thing move is with the V6 engine. Yeah, and EPA says 3.5-liter uh, V6 four-wheel drive Tacoma. 
um, is rated at 18 city, 22 highway, and 20 combined. Uh, but we've done many efficiency tests we have. with it. And uh, from our experience, at least my experience here in Colorado, um, and also towing trailers, we've towed trailers mm -hmm. with, oh, with yeah. these before. These are a little bit optimistic ratings. <laughs> what would you say? I would say, well, you know, remember that the EPA, the way they do their um, research, is very different than real-world driving. So in terms of highway driving with the manual transmission, I've actually bettered that number. But with combined driving, I was way under their estimates. Now, bear in mind, I have a heavy right foot. Hell, I'm a heavy guy. So there are a lot of contributing factors. Also, we are a mile above sea level. And while that does affect your horsepower, sometimes it requires more throttle in order to get the performance you're trying to get. So keep that in mind. Yeah, and sometimes, so we run our highway efficiency loops at 70 miles an hour. That's right. And we usually do it with no load. Mm -hmm. uh, we also do that test with a trailer. Yep. Uh, we're not, I'm not focused on trailers right now in this podcast. Yeah, that, yeah. Could, that could be another one right. um, as well. But for daily driving, Toyota Tacoma, 20 combined, it's just on the lower end of the scale. It's just about average. Yeah. So that's not... Uh, in my mind, that's not the Tacoma's strongest selling point. No, no, it, it has to do with its its ruggedness, its looks, and its its overall capability and reliability. And I think, uh, yeah, 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 I think that's part of ruggedness in this case because you can bait, beat the crap out of it, and it comes back for more. Um, also, keep in mind that the V6 that it's using and the four cylinder are two of the older powertrains now in this list. There's an awful lot of vehicles that now have new or significantly revised powertrains. Yes. So let's move on to another one. And this one um, came back to U.S. market mm. a couple of years ago, three years ago, almost. Uh, the Ford Ranger um, yeah. came back, came back uh, with a new powertrain. It's a turbocharged four-cylinder gas engine. Right. So it's kind of something new for the segment, right? Because we haven't seen that uh, before in this particular segment. Well, not recently, at least. Yes. And, and there's, keep in mind that that four-cylinder comes connected to a 10-speed automatic transmission. And that's how... All those trucks come. There are no other powertrains, but if you think about it, you get the you can get a base model with that turbocharged four cylinder and that ten speed automatic transmission. So it's kind of a beneficial thing for the lower end, but on the higher end, it will really depends of whether or not you want a manual transmission and whatnot. And this is what the EPA says. They say for a four wheel drive, ten speed, like we said, um, Ranger, uh, twenty city, twenty four highway, and twenty two combined. If you were coming up to a sticker and you see that, I would say it's amazing. Yeah. Right? It's pretty powerful, like we said, oh, 270 it's horsepower. It's still one of the quickest uh, yeah. small trucks we've Very quick accelerating. Yeah. And good numbers. But there's a big but. Mm -hmm. we, I haven't seen these numbers in the real world. Yeah. We, we've actually had uh, quite a few times with real world driving have not been able to match those numbers. And then on top of that, uh, the older Ranger, uh, when it uh, first came out, gave us numbers that didn't quite jive with what we found at the pump. Am I correct? Yeah. So the trip meter would say one thing, mm -hmm. but it would actually get a slightly lower number at the pump. Uh, and this trend continues. We, we can talk about that a right. little bit. And, and it, I don't know what the reason may be. You know, sometimes we test brand new trucks. So, some of them are not completely, you know, broken in shaken in yeah. down or broken in right, right. because the computer may be confused. Maybe it was the first road trip that that computer ever saw. No matter what the reason is, Ford, at least in our experience, in my experience, mm -hmm. Ford has been overestimating their efficiency in some ways in a big, significant way, which we'll get to in a second. Right. Um, well, let, let's continue. Let's continue to the next one. Uh, I think we have to touch the Chevy Colorado and GMC Canyon uh, twins. Yes. Um, and they have many engine options. Three engines. Currently, they do. Yeah. Different transmissions, anything from a four-cylinder natural aspirated gas motor to V6 gas to even a four-cylinder diesel. Yeah, and that four-cylinder diesel is remarkably efficient. Yeah, EPA says right now, this is for 2022, uh, 19 city, 28 highway, 22 combined on a four-wheel drive diesel, mm -hmm. uh, Canyon or Colorado. Um, and those numbers, in our experience, remember a couple years ago, we did the GMC Canyon. That was a green one, right? Green truck that was a, with a yeah. diesel, four-wheel drive. Yep. Fully and loaded. Fully loaded, too, by the way. Well optioned. Yeah. Two of us yep. in the truck. We got 32 MPG. Now, bear in mind, it, it wasn't just the truck telling us this. We went to the pump, and we verified it at the pump as well. So that 
For I mean, it, it knocked down all the barriers in terms of uh, efficiency numbers. That was back remarkable. then. This back was then. two years ago. Yeah. yeah, and you know, even by today's standards, that is really, really remarkable. But you have to remember, there's a premium you have to uh, pay in order to get the diesel engine. Yes, so that's you pay up front. Yes, absolutely. Be it three thousand dollars or some other number for different trucks. Correct. Uh, yes, it, it is the reality. If you want that efficiency, so here's what I would say, and I've said that before. If you are driving a lot of highway miles, let's say you live far away from the city, you mm-hmm. have to go to work or something. If you're driving, I would say more than fifty or sixty miles a day, I think a diesel would make sense. Yeah, even um, with that upcharge. Yeah, because you're putting a lot of miles. The diesel is properly warmed up by mm-hmm. the time you're go- getting going. It's more efficient when it's warmed up. Yeah. Right? Um, and But if you're making short trips, I wouldn't recommend a diesel at all. Well, that would probably be something we'll talk about a little bit later, and that's that's a hybrid. But, yeah. uh, but we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. So, yeah, so that's how GM does this. Mm-hmm. Um, their gas engines are also average. So no spectacular, uh, you know, things here. Uh, next up, I want to talk about Gladiator. It's also very popular. Yeah. It's only four-wheel drive, only crew cab, so it's kind of more simple. It does have two different engines, um, at least now. Um, it has the V6 gas and mm-hmm. the V6 diesel. And actually, the the diesel motor, this is a three-liter diesel now. Yeah, it's uh, their eco diesel, yeah. Yeah, uh, with an eight-speed automatic. Um, gets EPA 22 Highway 28, I'm sorry, 22 City 28 Highway 24 combined. This 24 combined number is one of the highest of all of the midsize trucks. And, and I, it's realistic. Yeah, exactly. I was about to yeah. say, and that's, that's, we've actually been able to confirm that that's pretty damn close to what, what it does. Now, it's an interesting thing because even though this truck is torquey and it has this you know diesel engine, its uh, towing numbers have not increased, which we thought was really strange. Uh, I think that... If you once again exactly what Andre said, if you live far away and if this is something you want to, you know, real beefy four by four, this will work. Now, bear in mind, by the way, just quickly jumping back to Chevrolet, um, they do have at least currently the uh, both Bison and the uh, ZR2, mm-hmm. and those both can come with a diesel engine. However, they are both much heavier vehicles, and they don't get the same type of efficiency. Absolutely, and this touches on another point I wanted to bring up, because as we move into the future, you know, it's already we're talking about 2022 models yeah. now, and we're getting more and more high tech power plants, right? Yes, we'll talk about a little bit of electrification sure. uh, later. Um, so we're getting more fancy. Sometimes those engines and transmissions are a little bit more pricey, yeah. right? And they're improving our efficiency. But there is another trend where a lot of us, and I think I'm guilty of this. We want bigger tires, we want four-wheel drive systems, we want low-range transfer cases, which all add weight. Then we want roof racks, bed racks, g- tents. Yeah. We all, all want this. Yeah, there, there's, there's, this, there's a couple issues. You have weight and you have drag, and you're adding both. So once you put on four-wheel drive and bigger, thicker tires and all of the extra stuff on top, aerodynamic. So you know, you're losing so many things. There's parasitic loss. There's all these other things. So suddenly when you take that truck, and, and we're guilty of this because we love doing it too, and you build it up to make it you know, your fantasy off-road you know, vehicle, you're suddenly in the zone of, hmm, I wonder why I'm only getting... 16 miles per gallon. Or, or worse. You know, or, yeah. or worse. Yeah. You know, this, this truck is rated way higher. This doesn't make any sense. Just adding a few things can make a huge difference. And so, you know, keep in mind that the vehicles that the EPA tests that get those numbers usually are the ones that don't have a whole bunch of stuff hanging off of them. Yeah, and it's also um, aerodynamics. You right. know, mm-hmm. we're not talking about racing cars here or sports cars, but uh, for any truck, and you can see this um, even every day on the street, uh, aerodynamics is a big thing because a lot of manufacturers like those low chins yep. right in the front. It, they almost look like NASCAR at this point. At this point, they're super huge, uh, and and that's because they don't want air going underneath the truck because it kind of disturbs the flow and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Right, and and the the, la- the least uh, aerodynamic th- component of your vehicle is both the front end and the underside of your vehicle, which is why they w- want to channel air around it. 
Yeah, and, and this is why electric vehicles are a little bit more efficient because they have flat bellies. It does and, help. Yeah, and very, very clean kind of air down there. I wish I had a flat belly. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> so, so if you're looking at the midsize trucks, yes, we mentioned a couple of diesel options, which are realistically very excellent. We've proven this on right. our loops. Um, of course, if you want to go with gas, more power to you. You can save some money. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would say just looking at the list, um, I think you should probably lean towards Honda Ridgeline. <laughs> oh, uh -huh. that's, so that's another one. No, it's it's on our list. And, so it's twenty one combined. So. Yeah. So so it's what, the same size. It right? is, and, and it, it's ratings now. Granted, its tow rating is five thousand pounds. These other trucks can go up to well past seven thousand pounds, um, but its load rating is actually superior to some of these trucks, and it'll hold just as much stuff. Its bed is actually very wide, and uh, Roman and I, I'm pretty sure you as well, Andre, would agree that it is the most comfortable midsize vehicle in this segment. Granted. It doesn't have a full frame, but it does have a subframe actually mm -hmm. um, under yeah. the re rear section. I actually seen it. Yeah, yeah, there was a cutaway that I was I was looking at once. Yeah. He got angry and he took a chainsaw. But uh, yes, but it's for what a majority of people are doing out there in terms of uh, needing X amount to tow or load or whatever. These types of pickups make a lot of sense, and we will cover those new small ones, which are brand new to the segment as well. Yeah, right, right next. And, of course, the final midsize truck to mention is the Nissan Frontier. It's all new for 2022. Well, almost all new, um, other than the frame and some other components. Mm -hmm. But it has a new power plant. I um, wish. Nine, yeah, nine-speed nine automatic transmission, and a rating that's just about 17 city, 22 highway, and 19 combined, mm. which is, once again, average, yeah. not great. Um, it's not a standout of efficiency. We actually are getting one very, very soon this week. Right. Um, and we'll be doing more testing, so stay tuned for that. Um, uh, we actually ran the, the Pro 4X Frontier already on our MPG loop, mm -hmm. and it actually was good in the real world. So the numbers you see, the 19 number or the, or the 22 highway, that's realistic, and okay. that's good. Yeah, that is good. They're, they're, they're you know, playing the game by the rules. Um, but I have to say, out of all the trucks that are on this list for the midsize trucks, the Nissan might be the smoothest and one of the more quiet and comfortable ones in the class. They raised the bar. They on really this one. did. Yeah. O only the Honda comes close in terms of uh, ride smoothness, and yeah. smoothness, right? I would agree. So let's move on to compact trucks uh, because it's the only segment for 22. Right now, you know, there's a lot of different people out there who want to pigeonhole these vehicles into a title. I've actually, I'm guilty of it. I call them compact pickups or I call them crossover pickups, trying to avoid the word truck because people get offended by the fact that they don't have frames. So simply put, these are unibody vehicles that are built to be a more entry level companion to midsize and full size trucks. Yeah, and we actually published a fuel efficiency video just a couple days ago, mm -hmm. just very recently with a Ford Maverick hybrid. Uh, there's two of them here in the segment right now in the U.S., the Ford Maverick and the Hyundai Santa Cruz. Mm -hmm. uh, we haven't had a lot of time with the Santa Cruz yet. At least they're more fuel efficient models. Yeah. But that's coming soon. Right. Uh, but in the real world, uh, Tommy and I got together and we decided to do this. Um, I had a Ram 1500 mm -hmm. uh, Hemi E-Torque. Okay. <laughs> Why did I bring it? Well, we wanted to bring it as kind of a measuring stick, right? right. Make sure we're staying real with our test. And then he drove the Maverick. And we filled up at the same place. We went to our friend David's place, which mm -hmm. is round trip about 104 miles, I Give believe. or take, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah it's so about it's 100 it. miles. Yeah. Um, and when we showed back up at the pump, Tommy, first of all, he bet me that he would double my efficiency. And actually, I'm going to give away the video right here. Yeah, you might as well. So, I mean, you could also watch it on tr TFL Truck. It's there. But it was kind of interesting. Um, uh, he bet me that he would double my efficiency. Mm -hmm. And I said, mm, it's close. You could come close because we're doing a little bit of city driving, right. which is where the hybrid shines, mm -hmm. but also highway driving where the hybrid does not shine. That is correct. Um, and it's true for any hybrid, in fact. So he, at the very end, he was very smug. He got out there and he said, Andre, my computer is showing almost 48 MPG. And I just fell back and I was like, oh my gosh, 48 MPG, right? Mm. That would be insane, right? Mm. Really great yeah. for this 100 mile trip. Um, we filled it up 
Guess what the number was. I'm going to say five less. I'm going to say it was 43. 43-ish? Yeah. It was 41. Really? Yes. And this is us doing real work. I mean, we're not scientists, but we're trying to control everything, you know, mm. slight um, top off like we usually do yeah, on the both 30 times. Second cap. We went to the same exact pump. Mm -hmm. We didn't, you know, switch pumps around and stuff like that. Um, so we did a loop, a hundred mile loop. It's, so this kind of trend continues. We saw that with the Ranger where it was overestimated. Mm -hmm. This hybrid Maverick overestimated it. Even though 41 is still really, really it's impressive. Amazing. Yeah, it's, it's an amazing. amazing return. But, it, you know, that's, that's remarkable. I wonder if it has something to do with the fact that it's relatively new or perhaps you guys were doing a little bit of city driving before you got there or something. Well, we reset our trip meters, obviously, like we always do. And also, um, it had about like four to 5,000 miles. So it wasn't like fresh out of the factory. No, no, it wasn't. So, um, so but the, the lesson here is don't always trust your trip meter. Right. Right. So it, it helps if you sometimes, you know, just go through a full tank of fuel, check it at the pump, make sure that your truck is agreeing with what you're actually seeing. And it's relatively easy to do, too. Yeah. I mean, just, you know, just. Subtract, you know, take the miles and subtract by the gallons. Boom, yeah. you're, you're done. So it's very easy to do. And in this case, uh, the F Maverick was overestimated again. But at the end of the day, uh, the most fuel efficient um, Santa Cruz is actually rated at 21 city, 26 highway, 23 combined versus 37 combined for the Maverick. Now, the Maverick is king. Okay, still. Yeah, well, obviously. Um, the question is with that Santa Cruz, is that the front wheel drive with the smaller engine? That The number I just said was the front wheel okay. drive. So engine. a non-hybrid vehicle okay. in its class, it's yeah. still respectable, but it's nowhere near as just ridiculously good. And the thing about the Maverick, and you know, we've been talking a lot about the Maverick recently because it really did knock our socks off. My point has always been, for such little money, you're getting a, an extremely efficient vehicle that is extremely utilitarian. I mean, there's a lot to love. Um, the Hyundai does a lot of that as well, but they're very different vehicles in terms of feel. And we're going to be talking about that in later videos where we compare the two. And we're going to drop in sort of a third vehicle that we're going to use sort of as a measuring stick between those two as well. And that's coming in the near future. Yeah, totally. So I would say... So the midsize segment is a little bit more traditional, yeah. right? If you look at it just as a snapshot, right? Gas V6s are still king. Uh, diesel engines are available. Uh, not stellar MPG, just across the board. Just okay. Right. Uh, the compact trucks are the newest, and now we're seeing some electrification come into play. Right. And now they're pushing the limits, I think, where I kind of want the midsize trucks to also push. Which we could very well see in the very near future. I would say within a couple of years, maybe. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're hearing a lot of rumors about a lot of changes with a lot of trucks. And that's including, that's everything. Basically. Like the next Ranger, the next, next uh, Toyota Tacoma, oh, yeah. you name it. I yeah. mean, we could see a lot of rejuvenation here soon. So let's, should we move on to the full size trucks? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Yeah. So let's hit, this is the meat. Yeah, oh, meat and <laughs> right? potatoes. Uh, because this is the most popular segment. It the is The full indeed. sizers, the half tons. Um, and um, I want to just kind of go over these. Uh, I mean, we could take two hours talking about this. I which, mean, which we really don't have. <laughs> um, but what we can do is sort of summarize the most efficient vehicle so, uh, from each one. So, And we also did another podcast, which was very interesting. We, we picked the best engines. Remember that? Yes, I do. Um, and it was very popular with you guys. We had a lot of comments from you. Mm -hmm. um, so this is kind of that same talk, but we're, we're focusing on efficiency. Um, so let's take Ford. Right? Okay. The most popular uh, F series is still the most popular. Yeah, it's number name one. plate. And rumor has it you own one. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, I actually uh, bought a personal truck F one fifty hybrid, twenty twenty one model. Um, I almost have eight thousand miles on it. About seventy five hundred miles already on the clock, which is not a lot of miles in about eleven months. No, but some of those miles have been kind of hard. Yeah, I, I beat it up. <laughs> yeah, Towed did. trailers and Slended went off road. And literally beat it up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have scratches to prove it. <laughs> you um, certainly do. So, so, and I bought it because I wanted. It was the first like true hybrid in the segment, mm -hmm. and I wanted to try it for myself. 
So and that what, was mine. Right. And so that truck represents, I believe, the most efficient of the F-150s. Am I correct? Yeah. And it's also the most efficient gasoline-powered full-size truck. Yeah, Ford, I'm not talking about diesels. Right. There. Well, Ford dropped their diesel, right? It, they did for this year, yes. Right. So it's gone. So they don't even have a diesel to compete with, which makes sense because their hybrid is really efficient. And, and it's torquey. Yeah. And, and Hella torquey. It didn't make much sense in terms of pricing either, but that's a whole different story. Yeah. So F-150... Um, Diesel is no more for 2022. Mm -hmm. um, it was sold here and there in 2021 model year, but it's no more right. uh, for 2022. So uh, here's the deal with my F-150 hybrid. Um, it's rated 24, 24, 24. Mm -hmm. City, highway, doesn't matter according to the EPA. <laughs> this is a four-wheel drive, by the way. Right. Um, but it does matter in my experience. So what it's done for me when I am in a city... I, and this is my trip meter talking, yeah. which could be optimistic, uh, yeah, all right? Yeah. Um, I, I can, my trip meter sometimes reads 27 MPG when I'm going stop and go, stop and go, right. which I'm impressed by. Yeah. Um, when I'm on a highway, I drove to Albuquerque from Denver, which is about 450 miles, right. give and take. Um, I was showing about 21 to 22. Yeah. Because 75 miles an hour on the highway with wind, it's just reality of it. Yeah, right. it's well, so it's, it's the the hybrid part of the you know. It's out of the equation. Yeah, actually. it's it's just drag now. Yeah, as opposed because to the gas engine is always working. It's right. pushing the truck at highway speed, so the electrification part is not quite helping. Yeah, and remember, point. he has an extra electric motor, a battery, and other components that make the truck a little bit heavier. Yeah, so so still um, currently the F one fifty hybrid is. On paper and also on in reality, if you're talking about city driving, I would bet it's one of the most efficient uh, options. Um, other than, uh, for example, a Chevy Silverado diesel, right? Uh, which and we've tested many of these. Really impressive powertrain. And in re and, and real world testing, they're killer. It, it's their. I mean, as much as I love the 6.2, and I'm really interested in their new 2.7. Uh, turbo, we'll talk about that in a sec. This diesel is, in my mind, the best powertrain they build. I had one inside of a GMC Yukon Denali, and we drove cross-country with that, and I was averaging ridiculous MPG in a vehicle that has no business getting really good mileage. We're talking about the SUV that weighs like 6,100 pounds, that's big and tall. And, and I was not babying it either. <laughs> I was, I was well, not yet, going slow. You had somewhere to be, right? Yes, that's one of the reasons. Y yeah, you had to get somewhere. So uh, that's impressive. Yeah, it, that thing just really was just blew me away. And it also uh, would blow you or and blew me away in a truck form. Mm -hmm. You know, when we've tasted when we've tested Silverado 1500 and the Sierra 1500, great great running trucks, uh, good in traffic. Yeah, and of course, w once you lift them, like for example, a Trail Boss, uh, right now is going to be available with the diesel, which is great. And the 84 has been available with the diesel, right? But once again, when you lift them, put bigger tires on, your efficiency will drop. Yes, uh, in some cases significantly too. By the way. Yeah, and according to EPA, also it will drop. Yes. So the EPA is uh, also on the same page. Mm -hmm. And by the way, the EPA is a government organization agency, but they work with the manufacturers hand in hand because mm -hmm. manufacturer, what they usually do is they provide them data. They say, this is what we think you would find appropriate. Mm -hmm. And if you t did your own testing EPA, this is what you would see because the manufacturer does their own testing. Of course. And the manufacturer uh, EPA looks at it and they say, Okay, that looks normal. Okay, and sometimes they verify it. Sometimes they do their own testing, right? So that's kind of how they work. Right, right. Okay, so uh, look real quickly. Uh, Chevrolet recently, or General Motors recently, uh, upgraded significantly upgraded their 2.7 liter four cylinder turbo engine that will be going into their half ton trucks. We drove the old version of it, and it proved to be fairly efficient and fairly powerful. But this new one is expected to be much more powerful. Yeah, and more torquey. Mm -hmm. So we haven't tested it because it hasn't been on sale yet. Yeah. So um, it, the 2022, the new facelifted models with the new engines uh, should be arriving between March and April time mm -hmm. frame. Don't... With the, all the well, shortages, yes. we just you know, uh, we can't be for, you know, for sure. That's what yeah. they say. It right. could be a little bit adjusted. Um, but, you know, shortages are affecting fuel efficiency too in a big way. Mm -hmm. For example, in GM, uh, when the microchip shortage uh, came about, they were actually one of the solutions they had. They removed their multi-displacement system, their multi-cylinder deactivation systems. They removed those computers. 
because they didn't have them. But not from all the trucks. Not just, from all ju- the just trucks. Just from a select. Um, and right. actually, we're seeing it in the EPA ratings for 22 for some of them. Mm-hmm. Because some of them no longer have, for example, start-stop. Some of you may rejoice. Yeah. <laughs> Some of them don't have multi-displacement system enabled because they don't have those chips right. are actually working. The trucks are still functioning f- fine. Right. It's just those cylinder deactivation features are not available. Hence, the ratings go down, Right. which is kind of a bummer because the new 5.3 liter V8 is rated now at 19 highway. It used to be higher mm-hmm. for a four-wheel drive. The 6.2 V8 four-wheel drive is rated at 18 highway. It used to be higher. Right. What are you going to do? Hopefully, with, as, as, as this normalizes, we get better efficiency. Right, right. The, the chips will return. MDS will return and, um, you know, all that other stuff. As much as you guys hate it. <laughs> it, it gives efficiency. Oh, I agree. Yeah. Um, Start-stop is something that I can't stand, but I do. I note the fact that it is actually something that helps efficiency. And Sh- also, in, just before we move on, GM trucks have always been true with the trip meters yes in our experience i remember driving our trail bus long-term truck to from here to moab and i think it showed something like 18.9 and by gosh it was 18.85 right you know, at the pump so it's in my experience gm trucks seem to be just on point uh, on their estimation okay should we move on yeah so ram is here mm-hmm. um so ram of course they have the diesel still yes which is also quite efficient we've tested it Many times. Now, this diesel has been revised several times for a variety of reasons, but um, it isn't the engine that used to be in some ways, and we won't go into heavy details about you know, their version of Dieselgate and all that other stuff, but we can say that with these revisions, it, um, its efficiency and power, those numbers have changed. Yeah, and it's still actually, they do have something called the HFE, the Ram EcoDiesel HFE high efficiency model, mm-hmm. uh, high fuel efficiency model. And it's basically, we had one of those trucks actually. Yes, we it's did. It's a two wheel drive, mm-hmm. it's a shorter cab, it's a little bit lower because it's a two wheel drive. It's got these efficiency tires, it's got a tonneau cover. I think it's got shutters in the grill, right? Shutters in the grill. Right. I think now most of them have it right, too. Right. But the special model uh, is rated at 33 highway still. I mean, Which that, is that's absurd. For a half-ton truck, that yeah. is remarkable. Yes. And we haven't tested it recently, but we, I think we got like 31 in it. Right. But uh, that was, I think, two of us com- doing it. Yeah. And this was like three years ago. Right. So that's kind of realistic numbers. Um, they're believable they're, for us. They're believable and close. Mm-hmm. Um, then, of course, they have the V6 and the V8. And the V8 Hemi has an e-torque system. Uh, when I ran my e-torque, uh, the story I was just saying, with Tommy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was in the V8 e-torque Ram. He was in the Maverick hybrid. I was actually impressed with this uh, V8 Ram, which is a backcountry. Mm-hmm. I got 20 and a half. Okay. So that's reasonable. It's a four-wheel drive truck with beefy tires. So getting 20 and a half out of this V8 was good for me. And that's a combined or is that a highway? That was a hundred mile loop. Okay. So, so a lot a lot of highway. A lot of highway. Yeah. Uh, e-torque is not effective on highway MPG. E-torque, its whole purpose is to give you a little bit of an oomph off the line. And, and, and start stop And start well, stop. Yeah. And so it should help with uh, city efficiency. Honestly, in the past few years that we've seen e-torque, none of us have seen a significant difference between e-torque and the regular engines that they're hooked up to. So, you know, hopefully they'll but, change that. But the EPA says there is a difference. Okay, well. So, if, but, but what I'm saying is don't always trust the sticker. Yes, exactly. Don't always trust the EPA sticker because in our experience, we had the Rebel with mm-hmm. E-Torque. Yes. Um, it was never, it never matched the sticker that we had. On. And this is before we started uh, putting stuff on it and yeah. lifting it and all this stuff. Yeah, so, so if you are looking for efficiency, I think twin turbocharging is big. Now the Tundra comes in with a twin turbo. Right. Um, is that Not efficient? stellar. Yeah. No. <laughs> but, but. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's rated right now the non hybrid Tundra, and we haven't completely verified it. We're getting it uh, once again. We're getting week. one very, very soon. Yes. Um, 17 city, 22 highway, 19 combined. It's just average. Yeah. So, Toyota, even though they touched every nut and bolt on this new Tundra, they redesigned it. Frame is new, everything is new. Right. Engines are, transmissions are new, interiors are new. The efficiency is average. Yeah, however, there are two caveats. First one, bear in mind that this is uh, better 
than the V8 it replaces. It's more powerful, more way tor- better. Yeah. Yes, more powerful, more torquey engine. So just keep that part in mind. Now let's move on to the main caveat, and that is there's also a hybrid version coming out, and that should be much more efficient. Yeah, and I'm hoping it matches the F-150. I think it will. At least matches. I think it will. Um, but we don't, we don't have the numbers on it. No, yet. we don't. It's I mean, I did drive it briefly. Mm-hmm. Uh, I drove a TRD Pro version of it in Texas right. at the event. Uh, what I can tell you about the hybrid twin-turbo V6 t- Tundra, monster torque. Yeah. I mean, it, you can feel it. It's, it's just that feeling of being pushed along, like there's an invisible hand. And, and there's a, something to be said about the fact that the TRD uh, uh, Pro version is it's only heavy. available with the hybrids. Yeah. Am, am I correct? Exactly. Yeah, that's okay. why it's not on sale right now. Yeah. So that that's another thing to keep in mind because that's a popular trim package, but you can only get that with the hybrid, at least and, currently. And it and it's the heaviest package because mm-hmm. it has the biggest tires, the biggest, you know, most have skid plates and suspension right, and right. everything else and the battery yes that's 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 in it. it's the same issue that the f-150 hybrid has in terms of uh, its efficiency so we are curious to see how it performs on the highway we're going to make sure that andre drives it to albuquerque uh, and back and back <laughs> preferably and back yeah uh but no no seriously uh, you know, there's so the the regular truck yes it's not as impressive as perhaps we were hoping considering that you know that's going to be the mass-produced most popular powertrain is going to be in the non-hybrid. That's what's expected because it's less expensive. Mm-hmm. But it still is a sigh of relief for those people who are sick and tired of getting poor mileage with the prior powertrain. And as much as I loved that V8, it was not efficient. Now, quick question, um, and it's something we didn't cover with all these trucks, but out of these trucks that we've covered so far, do any of them require premium? Well, uh, usually it's the case with the the most expensive engines. Right. So if you talk about the 6.2 V8. Yeah, that one does. With GM, mm-hmm. that does. Uh, most others do not. Technically, technically, GM doesn't require it, but they strongly, strongly, strongly recommend <laughs> because if there's knocking and, you know, less octane, you know, because it's a kind of a higher compression engine. Right. They like high octane, especially in hot weather temperatures. Mm-hmm. Um, so Ford says 87 octane is required for EcoBoost engines. Right. So is Tundra. Uh, uh, so is Ram. Oh, okay. So I think across the board, most of them require 87. Yeah. Which Here, most, I'm sorry, go ahead. In Colorado, we have 85. We do have 85, but in most places, we're sort of unique. High altitude places can get away with 85 octane, but a majority of places out there, their lowest octane is 87. Uh, so uh, one more thing on top of that, we haven't covered all the trucks yet. We're not done with the midsize, or sorry, with the full-size trucks, Yeah, right? there, there's just one more, uh-huh. uh, the and, Titan. Which is exactly my point. Yes. Because Why? they say you should put premium in there if you want maximum horsepower. And perhaps efficiency, too. Exactly. Because these engines uh, like to be the optimal operating levels. Mm-hmm. Um, so, indeed, uh, all these manufacturers say maximum power and maximum efficiency with premium fuels. Mm-hmm. But you can get away with not using premium in some of them, Yeah. like we just said. Um, Titan has a 5.8 liter V8. That's the only engine. So 5.6? 5.6. What did I say? 5.7? You said 5.8. Oh, my God. No, no, you haven't had your coffee today. It's okay. So it has a remarkably good 5.6 liter V8. They've been building the, that V8 for a long time. It's been heavily revised. And unusually, they have a, a nine-speed automatic, very similar to the setup of the um, Frontier, its yeah. little brother. Uh, however, uh, other vehicles that Nissan builds that are large with a frame, uh, such as the QX80 from Infiniti and also the Armada, I mean, they have a very similar platform. They have the same engine, but they do not have the same transmission, which we think is strange. However, this is the only way you can get both the Nissan Titan regular and Nissan Titan XD just with that engine and transmission combination. Exactly. And the rating is just under the Tundra. Mm -hmm. Uh, This is the EPA rating. Uh, In my experience, uh, the Titan... Ugh, I mean, it's still kind of a big, heavy V8 beast. It, it really you is. You just drove it, right? Yeah, actually, I'm, I'm driving it for the next couple of days. Yeah, so uh, ratings are realistic. For example, uh, the 4x4 Titan is rated at 15 city, 21 highway, and 18 combined. Mm-hmm. And I've seen, I think I've come close to these numbers. I don't I, know I'm averaging that's... 17 right now, and my commute is about 90 miles round trip. So you're putting a lot of miles on this mm-hmm. one, too, oh, yeah. and, and lots of experience that we mm-hmm. have. Uh, with these trucks. So once again, to summarize full-size segment, 
um, electrification is creeping in, right? Mm -hmm. So the Ford already has a hybrid, full hybrid. Ram has had a mild hybrid, like we talked about the yeah. e-torque. Tundra will have a hybrid in a few months mm -hmm. uh, on sale. Um, and uh, those are the most efficient options. And also diesels are still here. Yes, they are Two still here. Two of them, at least. Two of them are still here. Um, and then, but if you do, if you don't want to spend the extra money for a diesel mm -hmm. or a hybrid, hybrids are also expensive. Yes, they are. Uh, normally, normally they are. Up uh, front, I mean. Uh, up front, yeah. uh, with one exception, and that once again is the Ford Maverick, which is its least expensive version. Actually, its <laughs> least expensive, least expensive vehicle that Ford sells is the Maverick, the base model, yeah. which starts at around twenty. It'll be hard to find one at that price, but nonetheless, that's they're they're sort of the exception to the rule, which is something that I find awesome. Uh, but in most cases, if you're getting a hybrid powertrain or a larger V8 or diesel, you're going to be spending extra money. Yeah, and I would say, to summarize once again, if you want, uh, I've had personally good experience with GM, especially the 10-speed, mm -hmm. either the 5.3 V8 or the 6.2. They're good. They have good real-world efficiency, so don't shy away from that engine, the 5.3 especially. Yeah. Uh, really decent really above average uh, real world efficiency. Yeah, actually that was great when it was hooked up to the 10 speed that we yeah. had. It was and fantastic. That, that, that trail boss we had was bulletproof. It really was uh, excellent. Yeah. Um, so uh, are, are, should we cover the next class real quick? Or yeah. Let's yeah, we do it have, super quick. Yeah, so because heavy duty trucks are not rated for EPA, yeah. because they're over a certain weight limit, which is 8,500 pounds. So you won't see it on the sticker. Uh, you won't see it on the sticker. Um, we are one of the only uh, outlets at TFL Truck who do towing testing with heavy duty trucks, mm -hmm. uh, real world MPG testing, and also unladen MPG testing. That's because you're awesome. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. So let's well, get on to it. What are they? So um, I just want to pick out on the diesels. Uh -huh. So heavy duty segment, diesel is still king. Absolutely. As far as electrification is still coming, we know this. Um, you know, it's still probably several years away before most of us have experience with it, right? Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the public in general. Yeah. So I want to focus on the diesel trucks related to our testing, towing a very heavy trailer with one ton pickup trucks. This was two years ago, one year ago, one and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. um, this is real world data. We had F-350, we had the GMC 3500 Sierra, we had the Ram 3500. They all towed about 30,000 pounds. Remember that big excavator we had? I certainly do. Um, Mr. Truck and I did most of this testing. Uh, the Ford was the most efficient. And this is based on our numbers. Okay. Um, it got 7.8 MPG towing 30,000 pounds. It may not sound like much, but once again, 30,000 pounds. Yeah, up a grade too. I mean, oh, well, no, 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 this, this is, is the MPG. This is the MPG, sorry. yeah. Yeah. So but, this is 7.8. Yeah, but but nonetheless, I mean, if you think about the fact that it's towing 30,000 pounds, all that extra drag, that is a pretty impressive rating. What was the second one? Uh, GMC was in second place uh -huh. with 6.9. And unfortunately, and this was a shocker to me, Ram Cummins was at 6.0. Hmm. So uh, this is... This is just one data point. We'll do more testing. I know you guys want more heavy-duty trucks tested. Yeah. Because of the pandemic, we had a very shortage of heavy-duty trucks. Yeah. Heavy shortage. Um, but uh, hopefully within a few months, we'll get more. Yeah, and there's a, an important point to add to that. Uh, the, the trucks, at least this past year, no major differences with the heavy-duty trucks. We're expecting some new stuff coming out next year with those trucks. And I know this is really almost like a religious question. Which would you have, a Power Stroke, a Duramax, or a Cummins? Oh, man. I mean, we could have another whole show dedicated to this, and we can argue until the cows come home. Yeah. Uh, but at the, depending on the, based on these numbers we just re read, the Ford Power Stroke, in my mind, was also the quickest because we drag raced them. Mm -hmm. uh, it was the f most efficient towing. It also has the 10-speed uh, in this heavy-duty segment. Right. And because of that, I would recommend it. It, I, I mean, I, I'm with you on that. The only thing I'll say about the General Motors model, and I got to drive the 3500 around just as a regular truck, as a daily driver, it was a little bit more composed on the road, I thought, and I thought it had a better ride. Uh, the best ride came out of the Ram. But, I mean, you know, if, if, you're, if you're taking and nitpicking just little things, that's where I would go with it. But nonetheless, I agree with Andre. I agree with all of his uh, statements because I work with him. But, uh, but also because, you know, we've been doing this for a while now. And so we're seeing this real-world testing. We're seeing these numbers. And we'll get more numbers in the near future. Yeah, so I would say if, 
uh, obviously, if you want to save fuel and you don't live in a cold climate, uh-huh. two-wheel drive will help. Yep. So dropping weight, uh, not lifting your truck will help. Or adding all the extra goodies to yes. it. Yes. So all those things will help. And uh, like we talked about through the, this entire episode, uh, we just called out the certain brands that are, you know, very, very comparable to what the trip meter says mm-hmm. and some that are not. So, and we'll continue to do this testing to make sure that we have all the numbers. You know, I think we may have jumped, skipped one in terms of uh, MPG. We covered, we talked about the Honda Ridgeline, but I don't think you actually said what the MPG was. Uh, so the Just jumping Ridge, back to make sure the you guys are covered. The Ridgeline is rated at 18 city, 24 highway, and 21 combined. So it's kind of average in the midsize segment. So, but still, real world, you can get those numbers, no problem. Exactly. Okay. Um, so, I, yeah. And <laughs> finally, electrification. Uh, we haven't tested the Rivian. We haven't tested the Hummer. We haven't tested an F-150 Lightning. We haven't tested much else in the truck segment. We've tested well, many cars. Yeah, yeah, but we haven't tested um, any of the so electric trucks So we cannot yet. say right now what's realistic and what's not. Uh, but there are a couple things. First of all, you can go to tfltruck.com, and you can get a story on the Rivian where it was doing some towing. Um, Unfortunately, we were not towing. We weren't doing somebody it. Somebody else, else was, was because yeah. whatever. But uh, And also, you can go to our truck channel uh, on YouTube and see Roman driving the GMC Hummer, which is technically and a electric truck. And he fell in love with it. Oh, my God, he did. Yes. So join us next time at TFL Talking Trucks podcast. And we'll do, uh, of course, more of these very soon. See ya.